Zoom tutorial for beginners, how to use Zoom. Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how you can get started with Zoom. Now we all have heard of Zoom as the tool that we use for video conferencing, but Zoom is so much more than just a tool for video conferencing. It can serve as a simple solution for you to manage a lot of your meetings, communications, build notes, as well as use it as your overall work manager. So let's get started with Zoom. To get started with Zoom, simply head on over to zoom.com and then click on sign up for free. Now, before we proceed with our sign up, let's take a look at some of the different solutions that Zoom provides. So if you go into the Zoom workplace, you have things such as meetings, team chats, phone. These are features that we know Zoom for. After that, we also have productivity features. This includes whiteboards, clips, tasks, surveys, and docs. Then you also have spaces because when you're optimizing your Opex experience and trying to balance it with hybrid work, you can create rooms, you can build workspace reservations. So this is going to bring your team closer. You also can manage visitors. So you have a group and then you can add visitors in that. Then you also have digital signage. So this allows people to uh, stay informed when there is any type of interactive content. And then you also have employee engagement tools and employee engagement is a really, really important factor. They also have Workvivo where you can increase the employee engagement with a community led internal communication platform. And then you can integrate thousands of apps with Zoom. Now let's proceed with our sign up. To get started, click on sign up for free. And then you're going to enter your email address and then your birth year. I'm going to sign up with Google for a simpler sign up. So I'm just going to proceed with my Google account. And this will move forward with our sign up process. And we're just going to agree to the terms of service. And then after that, you're going to see whether or not you're signing up as an educator. So if you're signing up as a school or organization that is providing educational services to children under 18, you want to select the age range of the children that you are providing education to. For us, we are using this for work. So we're just going to click on create account and proceed. Once we have done that, this is what our Zoom account is going to look like. Now, over here, you are going to see your basic Zoom profile. You can click on your profile icon and then click on change to change your profile icon. So I'm just going to change my profile icon like this. And then we are just going to click on save like this to upload our new icon. Now in your basic plan, this includes meetings, whiteboards, team chats, mail, calendars, clips, notes, and docs. Now on the left, you will have your profile and you can customize that so you can edit your date format, time zones, as well as your personal meeting ID and host keys, and then your sign in. Then you have your meetings, webinars, phone, personal contacts, personal devices, and whiteboards. So to get started, we can go into meetings and you will see upcoming previous personal rooms and meeting templates. Now in this, we can click on schedule a meeting and then we can schedule a meeting on Zoom. For this, you can set the topic of your meeting. Let's say this is going to be my Zoom onboarding, which is going to be on Zoom and I can add a description as well. Then you can set the date as well as the time. So this is going to be held at, let's say, 12 p.m. And then the duration is going to be for three hours, or let's say the duration is two hours, like this. Now you will see the basic plan on Zoom is limited to 40 minutes per meeting. So you're going to have to proceed with this meeting in three parts. This really depends on the type of meeting you have. So Usually, it's really smooth to transition from one meeting to the next. Usually, after the 40-minute interval, people just schedule a break, a 5-10 to 10 minute break, and then after that, they proceed with the next half of the meeting. They can follow that as well if you don't want to upgrade. Then you have your time zone. So what time zone is this set in? So I am going to set the time zone, 
and whether or not this is a recurring meeting. You can set a recurring meeting if you have weekly, daily, monthly, or if there's no fixed time for the recurring, although it might be recurring, but there might not be fixed intervals. So let's say this might be a monthly meeting and then you can say how many months after does it repeat and when does it occur on every month. For us, this is a one-off meeting. Now, after that, you can enter the attendees. You can enter their usernames or you can enter their email addresses. And then you can enable continuous meeting chats where they will have a group chat before and after the meeting. I don't want to enable a meeting chat that is continuous. And I have my meeting ID, which I can choose to generate automatically. Or if I want to use a personal meeting ID, I want to generate this automatically and I can use a template. I don't have one, so I'm going to proceed with none. Then after that, I can choose a whiteboard. So I want to include a whiteboard in this meeting and I'm going to click on new. You can click on get started and you can use one of these pre-built whiteboards. They have things like agile and scrum whiteboards, design and research, digital signage, family and friends, strategy and planning, sports and games. So you really have a lot of different types of whiteboards that you can add. I'm just going to click on new and then the permission level is going to be for everyone to be able to write on it and then I can click on add to event. Then after that, the security password. So this is going to have this password and I can set up my own password as well. If I want, I can also add documents in the meeting. Now, if you want, you can also build a waiting room. So only users that are admitted by the host can join the meeting. I don't want a waiting room. I want everyone with the passcode to be able to enter. And then if the video of the host or participant is turned on or off. So I want all of that to be off. Then I have options. So I want participants to join at any time. Mute participants upon entry. I want to automatically record it on the local computer it is being hosted in. Or if you want to approve or block certain regions. So you can add certain regions or allow people in certain regions to only access the meeting. Then click on save over here. And our meeting is now scheduled on Zoom. Now, this is what your meeting initially is going to look like. You guys can see that we can navigate our workspace. This is our meeting workspace. This is the whiteboard that is going to be in our or linked to our Zoom meeting. And moving forward, we can even host webinars. So we can host upwards of 100,000 webinar attendees at once with 1,000 interactive video panelists. Then you also have phone and personal contacts that you can add in Zoom. So you can import from CSV files or click on add contact to manually add information. You even can customize whiteboards. So if you're hosting a certain type of meeting, let's say I'm hosting a parents teacher conference and I want to host or display a certain whiteboard so I have certain guides or anything I want to tell the parents about and instead of having to build it every time I can just build it in a whiteboard and then use that whiteboard template over and over again. You can also go into notes to add your notes, use documents to build or add documents, and then you will have recordings. Now, you can record any Zoom meeting directly and then save it on your digital device. And then you can even crop the clips of your Zoom meeting. All of these features are available on the free plan and you can just clip different minutes and then you can use those minutes as easy references for you to make action items. Now the best part is Zoom is available for free and then their pro version starts at $13 with meetings of up to 30 hours per meeting unlimited docs, cloud storage of five gigabytes and AI companions, and then their business version at $18.32 with 300 participants per meeting and can increase with larger meetings. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe.